Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. It is my honor to welcome to the stage a, a few of the key cast members from the next season of Grownish. First, we have Daniela Perkins. Please, Keela. <laughs> Trevor Jackson, you know and love him as Aaron. Check out the fits, y'all. They did a lot for us. And of course, our star, Marcus Schwibner. <laughs> um, welcome everyone. I think Thank we you. all had a little bit of a collective like, oh, when we saw that video, uh, when we saw that video from Yara being like, okay, guys, here we go. Sixth season, final season, bonus in two parts. Yeah. Marcus, for you, sir, this character who I think I did the math, if I did the math correctly, it's almost, it's over a decade, almost 12 years that you've been yeah. playing this character. It's incredible. Knowing that it's coming to an end, knowing when you started it, how what was that moment for you when they told you? And when did you find out that they were coming, that it was going to be ending and that it was going to be two chapters? I mean, shoot, we find out with y'all. So I was like, they dropped it in the trades and I was like, oh, I guess this is it. We're going to have to hold off on that summer house. No, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been a, a wild ride. 12 years is insane. I haven't even... Um, I feel like a rookie and a vet, as Drake said, yeah. at the same time, um, which is is crazy. Uh, I just I feel so honored and blessed that it's been able to go on for so long, like 12 years playing the same character is insane. I feel like I've been able to grow up with him, which is a weird experience, um, but it's very cool. I've been having a good time on Gronish with these guys. And yeah, it's it's definitely sad. It's bittersweet for sure. And Trevor, this is, again, no small amount of time for yourself, sir, because you had a little bit of time on Gronish before, I mean, a little bit of time on Blackish before it became Gronish. But I think this is also something different for you, because as much as you've been doing both music and television, this is probably one of your most recognizable roles. And, you know, putting it to bed is going to be a thing, right? Um, sorry, could you say that one more time? I know that I'm whole a, mic I'm situation. A bird brain. I got a bird that brain. whole just, mic situation just uh, really threw us. I'm sorry. Basically, what I would say is, this has also been a moment for you, as in this is your most recognizable acting performance. I think for a lot of folks right now, and so putting that to bed, it probably was a milestone for you too. This this character. Yeah, it's amazing. I think uh, this show in general. Uh, even before I was on it, I just think it did a lot for the culture, it did a lot for the world, it did a lot for understanding people that don't look like you, um, or maybe people that do like me but think differently from you. And I think that's, um, you know, healing, that's a part of healing the world. And I, I feel like that's something I've always wanted to be a part of. And being on this show makes me feel like I'm doing that, you know, playing this role, being a part of this universe that uh, just... Uh, opens up the conversation, which I think is so important. Um, and yeah, like he was saying, it's very bittersweet, but I've grown so much as a man, as an actor, um, being on this show. So I'm very, very grateful. And uh, I think it'll only get better from here. Danielle, I want to talk to you. I want to switch it up a little bit with your character because we're getting into the final inning. So I think as an actor, this is where you go to the writers and say, look, there's this one last thing I want to do with this character before we put her to bed. There's, we've done a lot. There's something that I want to see. What are you hoping um, to find in these next two chapters with this two part six season? What are you hoping that you get to do before you do put this character to bed, if anything? Um, I guess I just hope that Kayla finds some sense of peace with herself because she's crazy. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was hoping. I mean, I was thinking you were going to go more into the crazy, but peace is good. <laughs> no, she's so like wound up all the time. I feel like what she needs to find, and I think like it has to do with like just growing up is like understanding that not everything is under your control. And I think that's something that she struggles with a lot. And I feel like I, I, everyone wants to control some stuff that's happening in their life all the time. And that's just not the reality of it. So hopefully just calming her. <laughs> Marcus, one of the great parts about the Blackish universe, all of the shows is because it's a show that is so a part of the culture and because it's a show that has so many like friends of the show, everybody wants to call up and be like, yeah, I want to come on. And because the show really lends itself to that with episodic television, you guys get some incredible sort of like guest stars. And I think I think this year is no different. Is that right? Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. This year we have a, a ton of guest stars. We have Lil Yachty. Let's we go. have, let's go. Who's like, which was really fun. Cause he was, he's like sort of a reoccurring character. 
and we're like calling him my i'm like do i call you yachty or miles like do i how do i approach this um and he's just such a sweet down-to-earth guy really ready to learn and just jump into acting full force which was beautiful um we have kelly Rowland, a legend and just the sweetest woman on earth um we have omarion huge talent Woo. we've got lotto we've got a great season full of guest stars who just put their all into the show and i feel like it, it made it a, a great closing season um and oh, all their characters are just so fun i mean i'm very excited for this one but we don't have to take your word for it i think the lovely folks at freeform are going <laughs> to let us take a look uh this is actually going to go out you guys are going to be the very first folks to see this promo Ooh. this is the first clip you getting it y'all enjoy it that is so great. Yeah. Seeing just a preview of what that cast of folks is going to do is incredible. But I will have to say, Trevor, for you, you know, you're a musician and this is, does it feel like y'all just like want to put on mini Coachellas because y'all really just pull, it seems like every up and cover in the music industry and they're like running to be a part of the show. Yeah, no, I think that just speaks to how um, real and relatable the show is, you know, whether you're a musician, an actor, you work down the street, whatever it may be. Like, I just think it's a human experience. It's human stories we're talking about. And uh, I think, you know, people want to want to be a part of that. Um, and in terms of just music, you know, Diggy does music, too. And obviously, Chloe and Hallie do music. But whenever we're on set and we're not rolling, we're definitely singing, rhyming. I got him rapping and singing. And I don't know. Yeah. All right. Give us 16 bars. No, I was kidding. 16 no, bars. So uh, uh, so uh, no. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's funny. I, somebody with no musical talent, it's very entertaining because I just get to sit back and just have a live show every single day. We've got Justine Sky as well. We've got... I mean, Yachty was on for most of the season. It was just like, and Trevor and Diggy will make a song out of anything. You say one word and that's like the new song the new for the song day. For the next whole yeah. Eight hours. And we're just like freestyling and having a good time. And um, yeah, it's it's like a live show every single day. I do love that. Out an album. <laughs> like a whole, a grownish album. That'd be oh, insane. that would be sick. Be yeah. sick. <laughs> I do think it's got to be a different vibe for the day because like, again, just thinking of like some of the guest stars that have already come through, but like when they say Kelly Rowland is coming on to the set that day like danielle i don't know if you got a chance but that's got to be a day that you figure out a way to get on set right like if you can like if kelly Rowland's gonna be there you're like can i find a way to get on the set that week i just need to see one of destiny's child on set is that what happens like yes i mean like unfortunately like we all don't get to have scenes with all these amazing people so that is what happens sometimes <laughs> um but yeah i mean it's just i you kind of don't like for me it's just like ah oh, uh is cool. there anyone oh that God. you got starstruck on? Like, who was the one that starstruck you most? And this is everyone. This is not just this what's coming in season six of anyone that is guest starred. Who Who is the one that you were like, I can't? Are you asking her? You yes, asking I was her? asking oh. you, Danielle. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, yes, okay. yes. I, was like, oh. I mean, um, but anybody else, y'all are coming to it next, so. Gosh. Do you huh? guys want to go first? I will, I will say Kelly. Kelly was tripping. Because yeah. yeah. it's like you're looking at her and you're like talking to her, but it's like I've spent more than more hours than i'd like to admit like watching her you know <laughs> growing up you know what i'm saying like she's um talented stunning so it was just kind of like a little surreal yeah, speaking to yeah. Her for sure. surreal experience. that's a good one i want to switch this up for you marcus because you get folks like florence fishberg playing your granddad like this is like already Orpheus. like coming from the from the blackish universe the gift star is that one too grownish but over all of them all the time they've been playing this character is anybody that really sort of got you when you walked on set either a kinship or just like man i'm so glad that i got to to see them 100 percent was michelle obama that was like the craziest like because like that's somebody like that's a i don't know like that's somebody you never think you'll ever see in person you know what i mean like she's just like a, a like a part of your imagination like she's a she's a vision an illusion but she was like the <laughs> sweetest person ever like you feel like you're hanging around your aunt um so easy to talk to and it's just like i i love the obamas i'm just gonna say that right there but like also <laughs> michelle is just like the best so that was that was i was starstruck for sure i didn't know what to say it was like michelle obama and kobe were like the two people that i didn't like i literally couldn't speak so yeah, yeah. again just a bath of riches what yeah. you guys got to do i know i'd be jealous too i would be it's, yeah. it's a lot um <laughs> I want to add this too, though, because you're bringing up Michelle Obama and that is, again, sort of like the great part of the show is it juxtaposes what's going on in social moments. Like, again, the election of our first black president and the realities of that as a nation. But then it's also the like small parts of like just regular families, which means you guys go to a lot of really 
really interesting places on both shows, but especially with Grownish, I think young people, there are issues that didn't have time to be explored on that show that get a lot of focus on this one. So what was one of the topics that you were particularly proud that the show tackled over the over the past five seasons? Or, you know, maybe something that folks are going to get them sort of to tackle in season six. Um, I, th- I think one of the cool things that Trevor brought up was um, how it, it kind of, I think it showed a lot of the world that, hey, not all black people think exactly the same way. And you're getting fresh perspectives from each individual. Um, and that's what I think is so fun about the ish universe as a whole, but grownish in specific, um, also dealing with like youth issues. We did one on like cancel culture recently, which was, uh, it was a great episode because there was like a lot of different perspectives coming in from both sides. Um, and it kind of left me like dumbfounded. I didn't know what to, what to think and like what perspective to come from when it comes to, you know, cancel culture. And I like, how do we deal with somebody who's done something in their past and maybe, like they've changed in some sort of way or like jumping on somebody to cancel them because of the color of their skin or the way they look. Um, It was a very interesting episode. Um, So I think things like that, that really, you know, are pertinent to today's society and what's going on in the world are very cool. Um, Uh, My favorite would be the mental health episode. I think self-care is uh, I'm thankful because now it's like more in the, the spotlight, but for the longest being a man, being a black man, you're not really taught to, uh, you know, access those those parts of yourself you know kind of have a guard up so i think having a whole episode dedicated to that and letting people know hey you know even outside of that me and him will have conversations me and dig will have conversations just about what it's like to become a man uh, and in the world that we live in so um having that episode and exposing that to people that may have not thought that to be an option before self-care um you know is very very important Danielle, I'm going to switch it up on you again. I do feel like, again, it's a show about young people. And so there's there's issues that affect women. There's issues that affect men. But I do think, particularly as Yara was the protagonist through the first five seasons, a lot of the issues for young women that they didn't talk about uh, were, were really given space in the show. Is there any moment that really dealt with women's issues and young women's issues that you found to be really profound that the show tackled? Oh, um. Definitely. I don't know. I, I don't, I, for, I, I don't think I can like pick like just one thing, but just in general, just being part of a show that does have these hard conversations that you don't usually see in real life. I think it's an important thing to be shown and let everyone know that this is not a, a, a conversations not to be had with your friends and family and things like that, because you do hold in so much stuff. And when you do that, you're not understanding like what effect that's having on the world around us. And I'm just proud to be part of a show that it's funny, but I mean, like we talk about real things and I'm, I'm just happy to be part of it. The funniness we always say is like the sugar with the medicine, you know, I think that's, that's the best way. That's why a lot of comedians have a big impact because they're telling truth within jokes. And I think the show is something similar, you know? Um, Marcus, I definitely want to talk about this because um, there's something that folks don't maybe know outside the entertainment industry. And it's called number one on the call sheet. It's a very big deal in the sense that that means you're probably in the most amount of material. That means that you are probably what this production is relying on as far as the performance on screen. And I don't know where you were as far as being in the grown but the maturation of your character has also been the maturation of your involvement in these shows. I mean, now this is your season. This is not even the handover season that it was a little bit last year really taking it talk about what that's been for you to really start as like pretty much a child actor to now being the number one on the call sheet this is your show and how crazy that that evolution has been over a decade i mean listening to you talk about it i was like wow you're right that's that's wild huh um but i think uh it's been i mean again i'm just so thankful i started when i was 13 i'm 23 now um and it's just like wow, uh, being able to lead a show and have such a, it was a really easy turnover process because I have an amazing supportive cast of people who I, I have known, I've known Trevor for like Trevor. the entire time of, of, of Blackish, so like 10 years at this point too. Um, and it's just like having those kinds of support people. A lot of our crew came over from Blackish. Um, and I just, you know, I got to sit back and watch Lawrence, Anthony, Tracy, Jennifer, and even Yara and get advice from her on, on, on Gronish. Um, 
and being able to step up into this leadership position. It's weird for me because even like, you know, making speeches on set was a different thing for me. I was like, oh, uh, appreciate you, dude. Appreciate you doing it. Because I was like, what can I say to raise morale? Or like, <laughs> I feel like I should say something right now, um, which was a really interesting process for me. I've never had to do that in my entire life. Um, and I think maturing as a man, like you said, um, and being able to have supportive people around me is uh, has been made it just one of the the greatest experiences in my life. And I'm, I'm just very, very thankful. It was a smooth transition. What I'd like everyone to know really quick is not only is he a super talented actor, um, creative, but he's a nice guy. He's one of the nicest <laughs> guys and it's genuine. It's not like, Hey, I'm just trying to be nice. So people like me, he genuinely is a good dude. And I, you know, you meet so many talented people who aren't that way. So it's, it's honor to work next to you. And I, I just wanted everybody to know that if you didn't know, he's an amazing, amazing dude. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I did no want you to talk a little bit about because that's great and like you're being so humble about it but it's also pretty cool to like look at the billboard and I think there yeah. was a story from last year where you said like where you saw your billboard for the first yeah. time I think like anybody that's an actor aspiring actor out here would love to hear that story yeah, about yeah, that yeah. no it's insane because we definitely we had billboards for for blackish which was really cool but this like billboard was like me and Yara and it was just like I was up there. I'm not going to lie. The wardrobe choice was a little bit questionable. I had my, I'm just going to be straight up. I had my toes out on a billboard. <laughs> I was like, for free, y'all? Come on. <laughs> you kidding me? Um, it was interesting, but there was, <laughs> there was uh, uh, the billboard winner. So they could pay you. Is what you're yeah, saying. I was like, come on. The toes, bro. No, they had me in some sandals. Um, I was like, I don't wear sandals, guys, in real life. Um, I'm <laughs> flat footed. All right. Um, but uh, anyway, there the first billboard that went up for this the the that season of Gronish was like right across the street from my apartment, which was I don't know if it was strategic. I was like, how do you guys have my address? But like every day I'd wake up and look out the window and I'd see my mug staring back at me. And it was like, wow, this is really weird, but also very cool. Um, and it's just it's crazy after so many years of, of working in the industry and, and working on Blackish and, and now Grownish and, and getting to, to, to share the stage with these amazing folks. It's like, it just feels, it feels pretty good. It feels, it, it just, I don't know. I'm getting emotional now. It's crazy. Yeah, I never yeah. even thought that it would like, here we are 10 years later. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there's that, that billboard up there and Los Yannick on Wilshire. Um, yeah. <laughs> You go to LA, you guys will understand. It's you know a, it's that, a, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, big, yeah. big billboard. Those are big streets. Those are very busy streets. Yeah, yeah. Um, without getting too emotional about that, let, let's, let's be real. It's comedy. There's so much yeah. funny stuff that happens. Yeah. And like all of y'all, I can think of just moments where you kind of cracked me up. But it's fun listening to you guys talk about how funny it is sort of backstage. And I know like, again, this many young people, half of the job of the production crew is keeping y'all focused. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it's the gag it's reels. Me. It's mainly I've me. I've seen the gag reels. So I'll let's just let's just go ahead and take a, a trip down memory lane of the days y'all could not keep it together. The oh, days where they were yeah, like, you. "You have to finish the scene." I really I want you guys to sort of take us back from like those those tough days of like we we're just gonna laugh. Okay. Yeah. Then it's, Marcus, go ahead and then we'll go down. Always an issue when Trevor is <laughs> on stage. Not, not because he's like it's the true, true. no 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 because like we had one scene recently with Dig where we were. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> that was me that yeah was exactly so it's, it's really hard true. because he was like he has this scene where he's supposed to be like jumping up like <laughs> hopping just pissed and i can just uh, not stop laughing <laughs> this man has a vein like this thick on his neck just bulging his face is red his eye right like right. spits coming out of his mouth he's like pissed and i'm just like dying laughing during the take That's and it's hard this was uh, the other week. Yes, this oh, was the okay. other week. Yeah, 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 you were in that scene too. Yeah, it was like yeah, it yeah. was the craziest. And sometimes you just can't keep it together. It's like especially when you're hanging out with your friends all day. Yeah. And Trevor says this all the time: when you're having fun on set, that's like yeah, that's it the whole point. Feel like work, you know. So I like you know you get a lot of sometimes the grips or the camera guys get a little and you can feel them like tighten up. I'm like, dude, come on, we're here for 12 hours. Let's yep. let's somebody smile. You know what I mean? So sometimes if it's his close up, I'll be behind the camera like. You know, trying to, you know, just making it still feel fun and, um, you know, not like work. Well, it sounds like you're perpetrator number one for <laughs> breaking. For sure, for sure. But Danielle, is there somebody else? Because I feel like with your scenes, no, like, and I say this with as much affection as possible, your character goes places where it's a hard thing to keep a straight face. Like, oh. she is just doing the most. And so, you know what I mean? Like, 
So who's the person that breaks besides Trevor or tries to get people to break? Who's the most likely to sort of cause havoc if it's not going to come from perpetrator number oh, one? Geez. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> no, um, okay. I think that we all can sometimes have our moments when we just can't contain ourselves and it'll be about like the stupidest thing someone could have said something like in the chairs and then we're walking over and then we all catch on to like what was said and then we can't we can't pull ourselves together or I don't know sometimes if we get sometimes like I don't know a director would tell me a note and like I won't like they don't tell the rest of the cast members and then I just do something and like what are you doing <laughs> um but I don't know I think everyone Sorry, Trevor. <laughs> I, I think we know where it is. It's, it's just Trevor. It's not a bad thing, though. And it's no. not like it, it doesn't get in the way of work. It's just a fun little time to have on the side of yeah. the day. Gideon. <laughs> Listen, again, it's, it's because I think everyone is a fan of everybody that's a part of the production. That's why you guys want to have fun. That's why everybody wants to laugh about it. But also with a show like with a show like Grownish, with a show like Blackish, the entire Ish universe, because you tackle things that people have emotional responses to, they will sometimes then have emotional responses to you. Like the interactions with fans of these shows, I'm sure is not the same as like, you know, the folks that are interacting with someone from like, you know, Game of Thrones or something. They're like, oh man, you're so cool. They want to tell you about their life. <laughs> they want to tell you about the trauma that they dealt with in their family. Do you have any of those interesting fan interactions? After over a decade, I'm sure both of you do. Trevor, I'll start with you, Vinny. Um, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if I've had that like crazy experience. I always just kind of get like, Hey, love you on the show. No one's ever like, but I've had those moments, whether it's like musically, someone come to me and be like, Oh my God, I'm like <laughs> super sad stories. I'm like, we just finished the concert. <laughs> this is crazy. And I'm, I'm glad I could be there for even in whatever capacity. I think that's what we all strive for though as artists, whether it's on screen or music or whatever we want to, we want to be able to say that we help someone, you know, we want to, and, and in return, that's helping us. That's, fulfilling us and um yeah i think uh, i think it's important i know you I, have a marcus i know you have them for <laughs> junior which is is cr it's crazy for me because you know starting when i did like i was just like we're doing this show we're having a good time on set like i love to you know crack jokes and act and do whatever it is that we're doing um and never did i think that we were having an impact on anybody's life especially at 13 years old i was just like let me get in and out after uh, going to set today. Um, that's all I was thinking about. So nowadays people come up to me and talk about how Junior reminds them of their son or their their brother, a cousin, a nephew, um, people in their lives. And even people who connect with Junior on such a level, where they're like, wow, it was really cool that they were able to make you cool because that made me feel very cool. Um, <laughs> which is a lot of cools. No, it's like, it's, it's a very simple way of saying it, but like, you know, um, there's not, there wasn't a lot of nerdy characters who, which I feel like, you know, there are a lot of people nowadays, including myself who are huge nerds who also, I feel like, you know, can hold a conversation and have a social interaction. Uh, and I think junior like represented that audience. Uh, and it was very cool for, uh, those people to grow up with him and, and see somebody like that on screen, um, a positive representation who's not just a goofball getting made fun of 24 seven, but also has victories and wins um and is able to be that dude so it was uh it was uh it's i've had so many interactions and it's definitely been since the show has ended because at first it was just like you're funny and but now it's like <laughs> i saw you grow up and i was like it's, it's pretty cool i guess that is it they do get to watch it and, and part of that i think is because of the family unit um and also any time in the show when Tracy or Anthony or anyone shows up, I feel like it, it all comes back. All of those things that you guys did on the first show sort of adds to it. And I think um, we're going to take a look now at a scene from the upcoming season where you guys are going to kind of maybe take a peek at some folks. Uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to have a little peek back on somebody that I think you guys will be excited to see. Let's take a look. The more. The more things change, the more they stay the same. That's <laughs> what I would say after that clip. But that is such a great moment. Father, son, across each other at a beer. When did you know that was going to happen? And what was it like filming that? Because again, this is, it's, it's a different phase of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, shoot. Uh, I think they kind of told, like I said, I find out when you guys do. So... <laughs> About like a week out, I had read the script and it was like, Anthony's going to be coming in. And I was like, wow, it's going to be sick. 
Um, and so we did the scene, like you said, things don't change, um, which is always a lot of fun because, you know, Junior is stepping out on his own, feels like he's grown up. He's like, he's got his whole life together and he still gets sunned by his father, obviously. Um, but it was just a, a beautiful moment, even to, I think, for Junior, because he's been fighting. He was fighting the entire the of blackish, the entirety of grownish to hear that one phrase. I'm proud of you. You know what I mean? That's never happened for him before, um, especially from Dre. So I think it was a very validating moment. And it was um, kind of uh, I, I don't know where we go in this newest season with uh, that relationship, but it was a good bow or like a closing chapter for for Junior and, and Dre and um, their relationship for Junior. Just even just here. I'm proud of you was was huge. So. Again, as we look at this um, as the beginning of these like sort of last moments, we can kind of look back on it, at least with Gronish, as something where there's going to be moments that everybody talks about with all of these characters. But I think for each of you, you have a special moment for yourself. Daniela, do you have a special moment with you and your character that you're like, OK, if nothing else. This was the most fun to do or something you'll always sort of like hold with the character. Oh, I guess I guess I will always love having the opportunity to rant at anyone. <laughs> That's something I will miss leaving this show is just having the guts to say anything and everything and not caring at all. Has she given you courage to do that in your own life? Like to really sort of like lean into that? Or is this one of those like things where it's like I had that in me and I just got a chance to have fun with it? <laughs> um, no, I think I, she's definitely in like I used to like think I was not like her at all. I'm like, I'm not this girl. But as I've gotten to like, I guess this sounds weird, but like know her more. Um, I see more similarities between us. Um, we're both very passionate. We, and she has helped me, you know, kind of stand my ground, I guess, with things that I genuinely do believe in because I see and I play someone who has no issue just saying what needs to be said. And I think that's helped me realize that I shouldn't stay silent when things are making me feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. or I'm not happy with what's happening. Um, or I just want to stand up for what's right. Um, so I think she's helped me in that way, not feeling afraid to do that. Trevor, well, quotes alone, your character's quotes, we could make an entire panel on just the quotes that your character lays out. But do you have a favorite one or a favorite moment that you've gotten to do with him? I so definitely far? have a favorite moment. <clears throat> He's helped me a lot. Um, but I think one of my, the most powerful moments was the Black Lives Matter episode where we were uh, standing across from the cops and the... Um, uh, Avery was singing Strange Fruit and I like never heard those words and then I was thinking about it and I realized how much I suppressed just to walk through the day regular you know what I mean we got to suppress a lot um, and so I I was like hit at that moment I was like crying like had to like walk off set for a second because I just realized how far we've come as a, as a people I'm like I'm on a set I'm, I'm on a giant show I get to work with talented people that look like me and the world is affected by things that I do and it's something that wasn't thought possible years ago you know so that just kind of let me see everything from a different perspective. And I'll carry that with me for the rest of my life, for sure. It's got to be such a harder question for you, Marcus, because it's it's like we're going to just make it about this chapter. If we just make it about Gronish, there's definitely things that your character has gotten to do within it. Um, but is there one just in that part that you particularly hold dear? Uh, man. I honestly, you know, like maybe one of the the early grownish episodes where Junior's character was being infused was always so fun um, to kind of, you know, pop in and uh, meet the crew. And it was like kind of when worlds collide um, and just getting to see the interactions between those characters and how those dynamics were going to play out and the you know, the romance between Hallie and Junior was crazy. It was, it was, those were, those were a lot of fun. Yeah. I think the romance between, the, like, let's be real. <laughs> we, we, we were very focused on that for a while. We do have questions from the audience, by the way, if there's anybody else that would like to add in, they're passing cards around, but we do have a few to go ahead and start with. So I want to start with this. And this is a great one. Is there any prop or wardrobe piece that you have kept or really want to from the set? Daniela, I'll start with you because y'all, yeah. everybody's got fits. Everybody's Literally, got this is from set. Girl, back. <laughs> <laughs> I took it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. There's just amazing things, and they're so nice. Like they got a budget over there. But um, 
Yeah, so it's like it's fun shopping in the closet. Um, and I definitely, since it is our last season, I don't. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say this. <laughs> Watchers quickly be like, I took nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. But yes, I will be asking for lots of things. <laughs> Trevor, anything you've got your eye on? I take a lot of objects from set uh, randomly. I, I might have a problem. I don't know. I took a, I took a stress ball. Yeah, klepto. I took a stress ball. I took a Rubik's Cube. Just little objects. Knickknacks. <laughs> things you won't notice. Little knickknacks, yeah. But is there anything I really want? I think I want... Um, I think maybe I want the, uh, you know, no, I, I don't have it. I don't have it. I thought I had one. We'll see. <laughs> keep we'll it see. a secret. Keep well, I'm going to ask this different. I know yeah. you stole something from Gronish. Do not even. In fact, I've seen an interview where I think you talked about what you stole. So just tell us what you stole. Okay. So for public record, I stole nothing. Okay. <laughs> I've stolen nothing. Um, but there are things I want to take. Um, <laughs> of course. Uh, the entire wardrobe department, Michelle Cole, she's she a she's a genius. She goes off. No show has a wardrobe budget like Gronish. Like we are dripped out constantly. <laughs> like I'm going to raid the closet. I uh, come on, Michelle. If you're looking at this right now, I'm pulling up with a tow truck or not a tow truck, a pickup truck. Um, I need a bed. I'm this. I'm putting everything in there. Um, but uh yeah, I took from from Blackish when we were closing. Junior, one of his biggest things when like in one of our, our I think our pilot episode was that he was like playing field hockey and they had like one of the plastic field hockey sticks and I took that and I'm planning to like hang it up somewhere, but it's kind of hideous, so I don't know. I might just leave I'm it in sure the corner. I'm sure you figure it out. I'll you figure can put it in out. the garage. You can get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take the chest. Oh, the chessboard. Yes. Trevor is a master chess player. Not a master so. chess player at all. He's okay. insane. He's cracked. Like He's amazing. Playing, I like playing chess. The moment they say cut, he runs to the Yeah, he runs to the chessboard. <laughs> it keeps my brain calm. But no, it's a, it was a prop. I think I'll take yeah. that. That's a prop. That's a good one. I think this works for all of you. With the show ending, what kind of roles do you see yourself doing in the future? Would you like to be doing in the future? Danielle, I'll start with you. Ooh, I don't know. I think that there is so many things that are happening right now within the industry and with things that are just, you know, popping up and, and there's so many new types of shows and all these things that are so interesting. And I don't think that I'm a person, at least now in my life and my career to put myself in a box. So I think especially coming out of, I, I, I went from, you know, being on like a kid's show and then I, I went to Grownish. So I think I have so much room for growth and to discover what, it is for me if there is one certain thing. Well, that's a good one. I mean, but one of y'all's got to want to do a rom com. Trevor, you want to do a rom com? I'd love to do a rom com. What else, though? You want to uh, get scared? Any movie with Denzel? <laughs> I'll play a tree. I'll literally play a tree. I don't care. I just need to be like within five feet of him, please. Well, you do have a new role coming up, though, already that was just announced, yeah. though, right? I'm really excited about that. I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of his um, acting, and uh, I, I think he's just a, a very talented gifted actor so to just preview what you're going to be doing a little bit it's um a movie that i'm doing with shia labeouf and it's like a cop movie kind of like a training day type vibe um yeah and i'm, I'm very excited about it it's something that i've wanted to do for a long time action drama um and i think I, I, i'm really just ready to soak it in i just want to watch him work and kind of you know learn as much as i can let's go trev i know I mean, Marcus is another one. For you. you may just want a vacation because this is like this is like this is like your entire youth has been on a set. Yeah. But maybe not. Maybe you want to run into something so right away. Don't don't get it fooled. I be I be vacationing all the time. Um, so I'm definitely ready to. I don't know. I want to do stuff that I have fun with, like Danny was saying. Um, kind of. You know, I want to. I mean, my dream is to be Batman. But I mean, that would be a crazy thing to happen one day. It will um, happen. It will happen. Um, we're going to manifest that. But I just want to, I want to, you know, I want to do more comedies. I want to do more dramas. I have fun with everything. Um, so just, you know, soaking it in, experiencing it all. Yeah. Um, yeah hopefully some action flicks. I want to be the hero <laughs> of the story. So, no, I it's all good. That. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Poor thing, though. Uh, we, uh, you already at, answered this one, Daniela. So I'm actually going to ask Trevor is what have you learned from your character? That this is also from one of the cards that you want to take with you going forward. And I'll ask you as well, Marcus. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he's um, you've learned how to be extra. <laughs> Maybe you didn't well, that need me. that. that yeah, you didn't I'm, need that. I'm an extra guy. Um, I think uh I think not that I learned, but just reinforced um 
you know, just standing up for what you believe in, fighting for, for um, you know, what you want to do in the world. I think he's just a character that's constantly trying to do right and is constantly met with, you know, adversaries or, you know, uh, roadblocks. Um, and I met with roadblocks in my real life. So I think that just kind of reinforces, hey, it's okay. You're not alone in these things that you experience and you'll get through it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Marcus, what about you? I mean, I'm sure there's definitely something just maybe not learned, but that you've as you as you have grown, the character has grown. And so they've influenced each other. Yeah, they've definitely informed. I feel like the writers are like stalking me or something. Every new story is like happened to me before. Um, and so it's, it's just weird, um, especially the parallels between it's, when I started playing Junior. I feel like me and him were like this. We were very, very. Uh, similar in personality and, and energy and everything. Um, and I, I definitely have so many similarities to Junior still, but like as we've grown, it's crazy to see the divergence and see how he would handle a specific situation as opposed to how I would handle it. Mm. Um, and it's it's very interesting because, I mean, not I, he's the exact same age as me. Like we've gone through everything together. It's trippy. It's like a social experiment of some sort. Um, <laughs> so I, I, it's been weird for me, but cool. I mean, again, I've uh, asked this one to the other ones, but I wanted to ask you as well. Is there something now that we're getting towards the end and you know this is the final innings that you're particularly, I don't know, maybe not even pushing, but hoping that your character gets to do that you haven't gotten even maybe a hint at yet? Is there something that you've maybe hinting at all season? I'm sure there's something or it's um, all, all this time that you haven't gotten to yet. That I've been wanting. I, I Honestly, I've been very proud of... Uh, one of the things that when I signed on to Gronish, I was like, I want Junior to grow. I don't. Well, that's what I, one of the things I love about the Ish universe as a whole is none of our characters have remained the same from the beginning of the show till the end. They have grown with us as as characters and also humans. Um, and I, I wanted him to. His fly is harassing me right now. I'm sorry, guys. He was like Got in it. my. <laughs> Um, but I, 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 one of the things that I was, I was very excited about was, I mean, Junior has been stepping into the role of Andre, which has been cool. He's stepping out from underneath his, his father's shadow. And it's funny. Cause I was like a big proponent of it. I was like, I want him to be Andre. It's going to be sick. I'm so excited. And like, I'm the biggest villain on set for calling him junior. I'm always like, oh yeah, but junior wouldn't. And I'm like, Andre, excuse me. <laughs> um, but I think he's done everything that I've, I've wanted so far. I mean, even seeing this moment of him and Dre and, and getting to be told that uh, his father's proud of him was huge for him because that's, I mean, that's been his goal from, from gay. I mean, and as any young man, that's kind of, you know, you want your, your dad to be proud of you. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, there's, I don't know what else I would, I would want from him. I just, you know, hopefully have a fire ending, end up with like a, a little baddie. And then I'm just... <laughs> I mean, that like a great, <laughs> that's a great, great finish to Junior's great life. Finish. Yeah, I mean, it just I mean, I feel like that's so finite. I'm like, he's 22. Just enjoy. It. Go right, try. Right. Go, no, I would you like know, yeah. yeah. We don't. We don't. Oh. We don't know what's like because we haven't. We haven't finished filming, so we don't know what's in store. And the writers keep it very they close do. to best. They, they yeah, do, yeah, do, yeah. So we'll we'll see what what happens. We don't know. The one thing we we talked a little bit about, and granted, this was more of season five that handover. But this season, it's sort of like if that was the baton, this is your final lap, right? right. And, and this is the one that you're sort of going to the end. Has there been any talk already about the final? Sorry, y'all. Um, watch out. Has there been any talk about the final lap? Have they talked to you about like knowing already where they want to go and like going backwards from that? Have they told you anything about where they maybe want some of these characters to be by the end of the show? Or are they literally keeping y'all pretty in the no, dark? I haven't heard anything. Yeah. nothing yeah seriously i keep saying y'all we find out when you do so we'll hear it in the trades is what <laughs> will happen so we'll yeah. see all right well the last thing i definitely wanted to talk about is again there's folks that have left um sort of the season you know we have folks like yara and the twins and everyone else that were part of that original og is there anyone in that that again they haven't done anything in season 6.86 b is there anybody that you're like hoping that maybe that we've seen before in either show that that makes it back in that final half? I would love to see that. Sorry, well, I would. I would. Uh, everybody. Every yeah, just everyone. <laughs> I would no, love to see everybody come like for the last episode. I think that would be super, super dope. Anybody here in particular? This gotta be named. Come on, there's somebody you want to see in no, particular. No, literally everyone. We want. That's the issue. We want everybody. Everyone to come from Blackish. I want everybody yeah. from Grownish. All the issues, mixed dish. I want everybody there. Yeah. Last episode. 
All right. I think that's going to be it for us because I don't think I have any more cards, right? Okay. I just wanted to say thanks again. I want to remind everyone that Blackish is going to... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Gosh, I have to do that every time. Damn it. Sorry. Sorry. Dang it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Grownish is going to have its final season starting June 28th and it airs on Freeform and then also the next day on Hulu. I want to thank you guys so much for the thank conversation. Thank you. And I want to thank you all. It's hard. There's too many ish shows. There's too many ish There's shows. Many. Sorry. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you.